Hi, I'm Alistair Thompson. I'm a historian at Monash University and project leader for the Australian Generations Oral History Project. I'd like in this short video to introduce you to Australian Lives, which is an oral history paperback and ebook that enables readers to listen to oral history interviews. The ebook also takes readers online into one of Australia's largest oral history collections, and it offers a fantastic resource for teaching. So let me show you a short trailer produced by one of our students at Monash University in Melbourne about the e-book. I was born in Cairo in Egypt and my father was a member of the uh, AIF. Mum was involved in theatre and musicals. And I think she probably frightened a lot of people. We used to get a cane. Because you, know, um, you didn't do your homework? Yeah, because I didn't do my homework. And I got pregnant. A lot of exploring in the mangroves. You just walked down in the bush and they, they'd see the world <laughs> trespassing. Excuse me. Would you like me to turn it off? No, it's fine. Well, this is who I am. I feel happy because I'm doing it. Well, it makes you more human. And I'm getting my story out there for people to actually listen to. So in this brief video, I'll show you how the Australian Lives eBook works and how teachers can use the eBook and online interviews for student research projects or on any number of topics in Australian history and Australian studies. But first, let me introduce you to the Australian Generations Oral History Project. So the Australian Generations Project was funded by an Australian Research Council linkage grant, which brought together partner organisations from the National Library of Australia, ABC Radio National, and historians at Monash and La Trobe Universities in Melbourne. And between 2011 and 2014, we recorded 300 life history interviews all over Australia with the interviews averaging about four hours in length. In total, we recorded 1,221 hours of digital audio interviews, which are now archived at the National Library in Canberra. About two thirds of the interviews are available online with permission, while others can be accessed at the library or under the terms agreed by each interviewee. People often ask, who did we interview? Well, oral history projects, of course, never create a representative sample. We record a sample of the willing, of people who are happy to record their stories for posterity. But Australian Generations did seek to record a diverse range of Australians. We recorded 50 people born in each decade from the 1930s to the 1980s, with a sprinkling born in the 1920s. We aimed to more or less match the latest population census with a regional spread across metropolitan, rural and remote Australia, with a balance of men and women, and for social class and sexuality, and a broad mix of race and ethnicity. Around a quarter of the interviewees were born outside Australia. They represent our multicultural nation. We used our wonderful interviews in a range of productions, all of which are available online and accessible for teaching. ABC Radio made 10 radio programs on topics such as parenting, schooling and the home. Project Historians produced a range of journal articles in which you can read about our oral history innovations and about topics in Australian history, such as mental health, education, emotion, and belonging. And we produced a website exhibition titled From Glory Boxes to Grinder, Dating in Australia from 1945 to 2015. But in this video, I'd like to focus on our book, Australian Lives, which I co-authored with my Sid colleague, Sydney oral historian, Anissa Puri. Australian Lives is an anthology of extracts from the Australian Generation's interviews. For the book, Anissa and I uh, used 50 of the 300 recorded interviews which we transcribed to make selection and editing easier. We only used interviews that were available online because we wanted readers to be able to listen to each interview. We then selected hundreds of interview extracts, edited the transcripts and juxtaposed extracts from different narrators and different time periods to show change and continuity over time and to highlight the diversity of lived experience in Australia across the last century. The book has got two sets of chapters, as you can see. Five chapters traverse the life course covering childhood, youth, midlife and later life, with a chapter on ancestry that traces family histories back into the 19th century and beyond. Three chapters explore the themes of faith, migration and activism. And then in the concluding chapter, Telling My Story, our narrators reflect on what it was like to record their life story and why these histories matter. In each chapter and section, the extracts are usually arranged chronologically, so readers can follow change across time 
and consider the historical, social and cultural factors that influenced these narrators' lives. For example, you can trace the experience of Australian childhood as it changed across the decades and as it varied according to region or gender, social class or race and ethnicity, and as new technologies, for example, transform children's play. Or you can trace the shifting experience of Australian migration from the interwar years up to the present day from the perspective of both migrants and the Australian born. The Paperback of Australian Lives is a great read about Australian lives across the past century, but it's the e-book of Australian Lives that allows you to read and listen to the interviews and which offers an extraordinarily rich resource for teaching in Australian history and Australian studies. So let me show you how the e-book works and how, might you, how you might use it in teaching. And I'm going to switch to switch programs and take you to the e-book. So here we are with the e-book. For this demonstration, I've opened the Australian Lives e-book as a file on my laptop, but you can use any e-book reader, such as iBooks or Adobe Digital Editions, which is a free program that can be downloaded online. From the contents page, you can jump to a particular chapter. So let me click on Migrants. And you'll see that at the start of each chapter, there's a, a several page historiographical introduction that gives background to the history of migration in this case uh, over the past century in Australia. Then if you click forward through the introduction, it takes you to the extracts. The first of these extracts by Fred Henskins. And each extract has a very short biographical introduction that gives you a bit of background about this person. So Fred Henskins, for example, grew up in the Dutch East Indies where he was interned as a teenager by the Japanese during World War II and came to Australia with his family in 1946 because his father was very badly injured. Uh, but then his parents go back to Holland and Fred and his older sister remain in Australia. For each extract, you'll see that the interviewee's name is hyperlinked. So there's Fred Henskins hyperlinked. So if you click on it, a web browser will open and you'll arrive at the National Library's end user license agreement, which sets out the terms of use for each interview. So here we are, we've gone straight to the National Library there's the end user agreement. It really spells out what oral history is about and your responsibilities as a user. If you click accept, it then so takes you, do you to think that you made extract. The right decision back in and starts to play it. Now let me just pause there for a moment and sh show you a few things. I like to open up uh, the ebook reader at the same time as the National Library website. So let me just put that on one side and the ebook on the other side, and I'll close the index so you can see the whole page. Let me take you back to the Fred. So there you can see there, and in the ebook you've got both a time summary and a transcript. Let me hold the, pull the transcript down. It's a verbatim transcript and then an edited transcript in the ebook. And you can listen with your eyes closed, or you can listen with the verbatim transcript, or you could listen with the edited transcript, which is a more readable version of the story in the ebook. Um, so. The key thing is they're not exactly the same, and it's a really interesting experience when you listen. Uh, you can see how we've edited the ebook, and you can also hear all the clues that are in voice that you won't read in the transcript. Anyway, let me play you uh, the Fred Henskins extract. I'll put my own headphones on, and you can have a bit of an experience of listening and reading to the ebook. Six in staying in Australia. I should be because I was very homesick at first, but I couldn't leave. And I'm working for this Mr. Golders on the farm. I was very lonely and, uh, you know, it was a shock because you yeah, had here all by yourself and, and trying to, I couldn't speak English very well. I could a bit. And uh, having to learn working in, in, the, in the market garden, I was used to it. You having a good life, you know, because my father. Let me stop, stop the extract there. What you'll notice if you carried on listening is the extract continues beyond uh, what's in the book. So the National Library extract keeps playing. So if you've been enjoying listening to an extract from the book, you can just keep listening to that interview right through to the end if you wish, <coughs> or excuse me, if you prefer, you can just close the stop the extract playing and just go back to reading in the ex in the ebook and listen to other extracts. Now there's some other really nifty features which I'm going to show you uh, in the ebook. If I just bring it up on full, and I'm going to open the contents page again. So each chapter also has 
uh, a thing on further listening. So if I click on childhood, and I'm just going to go back to the end of the ancestry chapter, and you'll see that there's further listening. So all the extracts that we listened to when we were editing the book that we couldn't fit in the book, we've actually put them at the end of each chapter. So if you click on Trish Barkman, you can hear her talking about her family's background in the 19th century. Uh, and each chapter also has a list of further reading. So if you've got students doing projects on ancestry and family history, then there's a whole lot of extra extracts that aren't in the, in the book that they can listen to, and then all the reading about the topic to give them some background to it. There are two other really nice nifty things in the ebook. One is there's a narrator index. So you can go through and find, sorry, I've gone too far, find Fred Henskins in the index, and there are all the extracts by Fred that are in the book, and you click on any one of those and it'll start, it'll take you to it, and you can start listening to it. So you can listen to one sto person's story in full across the book. Or there's a general index, which is an incredibly useful resource for teaching, so that there's so many different topics, activism, Adelaide, places, themes, issues, and so on. Uh, banks and banking, uh, black town in Sydney, blindness. Um, and each of these, you can just click on it and it takes you straight to that extract in the ebook. You can read it and you can listen to it if you want. We did one thing which we think is really exciting in the ebook when we were um, creating the index, which is that we indexed emotion. So all of the emotions that you can hear in the voices of these stories are indexed. So you can look at fear or terror, happiness and joy, humiliation, shame, laughter and love, and track the experiences of different emotions across Australian lives and Australian history. So that's a fantastic resource for teaching. The index means that a student could follow up a particular topic that uh, is not obvious from the contents page but is in the index and explore it in depth and detail. Let me take you back to my PowerPoint slides. We think the Australian Lives ebook is a special type of oral history book and a special resource for teaching for several reasons. First, the book brings Australian history to life. From the viewpoint of, of so-called ordinary Australians, you can discover how people lived the big changes of the 20th century, how they made a new life in an old land, how they struggled and managed with emerging technologies, how they dealt with hardship and opportunity, how Australians were born, had families and grew old and died. We love the way that you can listen to the stories and hear all the meanings and emotions that are captured in voice. You can hear the laughter, the awkward silences, the deep sighs, all the audio qualities that bring the text of a transcript to vivid life. For example, you can get a sense of the power and meanings of voice when you listen to this short extract about dating from the first love section in the youth chapter by Arthur Hunter, a young Aboriginal man from the remote Kimberley region in northwest Australia. So let me take you back to the ebook, which is here. I'm going to go to the narrator index. I'm going to click on to find Arthur Hunter. So Arthur grew up in the Kimberley in an Aboriginal community and here he's talking about one of his first dates as a young man. So I'm going to click on the, I know where the page is, it takes you straight to it. And just listen to the voice and compare listening to this voice to, to listening to Fred Henskin's voice earlier on. So here's Arthur describing dating culture amongst young Aboriginal men and women in the Kimberley in the 2000s. The rare pink diamonds. Um, I was thinking about working there, but I was like, "Nah, I've got a broom just for the girls," you know. And um, uh, on my last visit down to Broom, had this uh, had this com this competition co called Kimberly Girl, and um, 2006, uh, me, my mate, and my teacher, we built this um black border for the staging, and you know to to help the help the gallery mob you know set set up and there was one girl that was um that was in the competition her name is Angel Phillips yeah um she was there and <coughs> excuse me um she was checking me out from, from what she told me and and then on the finals <laughs> on the finals night uh, she got someone to come up and come up and ask me, you know, if you want to go out or, you know, hook up or something. I was a good boy. And I was, you know, the girl come up to me, she's like, oh, this girl want to know. I'm thinking, fuck. I was thinking, gee, 
They're gonna ask this other dude here, my cousin. But I was shocked that the girl wanted to like go out with me or something, like go out with me. And I was speechless. I was shaken. Um, Can you explain that that's a bit of broom style or Kimberly style about how Anjo didn't come up to you direct, yeah. her friend? Can you just explain that um, how that's the style? Uh, up, up here in, in the Kimberleys, uh, we don't, well, some people do, but most people don't. They get someone to, they get a friend or a cousin to ask a girl or a guy out. So they don't go directly to that person and ask them because they're scared to get shut down or get rejected when people don't like that, getting rejected. So she did that to me and she got someone else to do it for her. And I said, yeah, okay, might as well. I was I was really shy and a little good boy. And um, I went past the toilet and I, I was dragging the bin. And I'll stop the extract, extract there, which it carries on. Look, there's several things I really love. Uh, about that. One, you can hear, you realise an oral history interview is a dialogue and you can hear Elaine Rabbit, who's the interviewer, come in and help Arthur explain something distinctive about Kimberley Aboriginal culture, that people don't approach others directly because that's shameful. I love the fact that you can hear Arthur's voice and you can hear so much meaning in the voice. Uh, and if you compare that to Fred Henskin's voice, a much older man, a migrant Australian, the voice tells you a lot about their experiences, who they are, where they've come from, uh, something about their lives. And I like the fact as a student, if you're researching, for example, the experience of courtship and dating, you can use this chapter and track the experience of courtship and dating across the 20th century, from Ruth Apps in the 1930s meeting a guy on the train, to Fred Henskin's uh, girlfriend getting pregnant before they were married uh, when they were both teenagers, uh, through to Arthur Hunter in the early 2000s up in the Kimberley. You can see change across time, but also you can see different cultures. So the culture of dating in the Kimberley in the 2000s is very different from the culture of dating in the big cities down south. Let me go back finally to conclude to the slides. Above all, the Australian Lives is a starting point for research journeys, as it navigates you into a vast online oral history archive and allows you to explore so many voices, so many stories, so many different topics. This is what makes Australian life such a useful teaching resource for Australian history or Australian studies more generally. To give you an idea about how you might use Australian lives in your classes, let me tell you what I'm planning to do at Monash for a course that I'm going to teach for the first time in 2018. It's a course called Australian Stories, People, Place and Histories. The course will be thematic with weeks focusing on topics such as childhood, migration or faith. And for each week, I'll set the appropriate chapter from the Australian Lives book for reading and for listening. I'll ask the students to read and listen to the interview extracts in the chapter. And in class, we'll discuss what they can teach us about the topic. Student assignments will then take the students beyond the book and into the online interview archive. So, for example, a student might like to research the changing experience of being a teenage girl across the 20th century, from young women in the 1930s putting together a glory box in anticipation of marriage, to wage discrimination in the 1950s, to fashion in the 1960s, to coming out in the 1990s or social media in the 21st century. Students will be able to read and listen to online interviews that situate teenage life within family and social contexts. They'll be able to compare different interviews and explain how and why teenage life varied for young people from different backgrounds or regions, and how young people's lives changed across time. In short, Australian Lives is a resource for a wide range of student research projects, which can be tailored for students of different ages and stages. Now, my undergraduates might do more ambitious projects, for example, exploring the history of sexuality and the contentious issues of teen pregnancy, abortion and adoption, about which there are many stories in the book and in the online archive. A younger student, for example, a school student in Year 7, might instead focus on childhood and leisure, as it's changed across the 20th century and into their own lives today. So I hope you'll have a look and listen to our ebook and think about how you might use it in your teaching. And I'll be happy to share ideas from my own teaching experience and about using the Australian Lives ebook and the Australian Lives interviews. Thanks for watching.